Welcome to the class today. Today we're going to be painting on feathers, not painting feathers, painting on feathers. It's a really specialized little technique that very few artists actually know how to do yet. When people are in the public see these artworks, they instantly buy them because they absolutely love them. It's something that you don't see very often, but they're yet super striking paintings. Today, I'm going to show you that it's actually not that difficult to do it. It's a really simple process to, to prepare your feathers and stuff for painting on. So let's go over and take a look. So we'll start with what kinds of feathers can you paint on? So let's take this feather over here. What you're looking for is a feather that has lots of space to paint on. And as little gaps and stuff as possible. So this year would make a great feather to paint on. You've got lots of space to paint on and just a few little gaps. And often you can get rid of these gaps just by carefully combing and coaxing those the little hairs on the feather back together again. And that will increase the amount of space you've got. So the feathers that are not good for painting on are little like feather dusters, you know, um, ostrich feathers and stuff like that. Or these little fluffy feathery bits, <laughs> those real bits like that. You can't paint on that. They, they just move around too much. You need it to be more stiff like this. Those make good feathers. So the feathers that I like to paint on are um, turkey feathers and that's simply because the turkey feathers have nice big areas to paint on plus they have lots of texture these white bits these dark bits here's little patterned bits which makes them really really interesting to paint on and then what you can obviously do is you can now go and take them and uh, overlap them and to give yourself even bigger painting areas. So I get my feathers from the dollar store. They come in just little packets with three feathers in a packet. It looks like that when you buy it. So what you do need to do with your feathers is just prepare them. You'll need to clean them. So here on this end of here, you'll often find it's quite dirty. It's got almost like a, a papery kind of uh, material on it. So I'll just pull that off and, and throw that away. And then any loose little ugly bits of feather that are here on the end, I'll carefully just trim it off with the scissors, just like this. Just cut them off like that. But if it's just little bits like this, th that's that's interesting. Th that looks nice. It's just the ugly bits. Some of them are like real tatty and so on. You want to just get rid of those so that you've got a nice looking feather. And then from here, the feather has got a like an oily layer on it so that the bird, if it does get wet, it dries off really quickly. So we need to get rid of that oily kind of layer and to do that just use plain old soapy water so in here I've just have warm water just lukewarm water and dish soap standard sunlight dish soap you just gently dip your your feather in there and gently rub your fingers Rub the feather between your fingers like this. And that removes that layer, that oily layer. So you find often you'll get a feather, the, the, some of the feathers in packaging and stuff, they've, they've cooled over here at the bottom. And during this washing process, you can often get that cooled over and cooled back ugly bits. 
to come back forward again. Because all, all that's happened is when they've put it in the packet, they've just folded backwards. And now they've sort of just been like that for a few months until you've now bought these feathers. So that's all. So you just by washing it, same as when you wash and dry your hair, you can uh, change the style. You can do that. Right, so we'll just put that one side there like that. Now to dry the feather, I'm going to just lay down an old towel like this. Put the feather on there. And just fold that over and just give it a good little gentle press like that. You'd be amazed at how much water that feather can hold. I mean, just look how wet that towel is over there. And then from here, you're going to dry this off. Very gently. So you can take your hair dryer. Keep it on the a cool setting. Not It doesn't have to be ice cold. Just uh, the coldest warm setting. And just a very low blowing action. And then... Keep a good distance away from the feather. You don't want this hair dryer to blow all these little feathers apart so that they so that they, they split like like this. You want to try and keep them nicely together as much as possible like that. You do that by being gentle with your feather. Feathers are very delicate objects, so we have to treat them with that respect. So all I'm doing is just gently rubbing my fingers over those hairs like that. Just helping to push out any excess water. But for the most part I'm letting these hairs dry naturally. You see when you when you've wet the, the feather, it does tend to crimp together so that these the, the, the hairs themselves appear to be smaller or cover a, a smaller area but the minute you dry it they will they'll spread back out again and, and give you a nice big air painting area so this is also the time when you've got those little hairs over here that have folded themselves over and aren't in a in a good direction. Just gently, gently hold them like this, while the hair dryer is drying them, and just coax them back into position so that they're nice and neat. And you'll also be able to do that with hairs that have split. Just gently rub over them like this with your thumb and and a finger. And you'll be able to bring those feathers, f the hairs of the feather, back together again. Super, super gentle. Any moisture that's on my finger, I'm just rubbing it off on the towel, just to get rid of that. Otherwise, you, you just wipe it back onto the feather. When you're doing this, you can also feel how soft the feather is. It's insanely soft. Alrighty, can you see how that feather has flared back out again? We can turf the turf the towel now. So now I'm just going to just gently coax any little gaps back together again. Just best I can. Here I have, during the process, managed to get most of them back together again. I 
Sometimes what you have to do is just use a, a gentle little rolling action like this. Just to get, because these little fine hairs need to align themselves with each other again. So if you, they're so small, if you have two that just cross each other like that, then they don't align nicely. Look at that. See, I've got most of these things nicely back together again. Look at that. Beautiful, eh? See here, I can see these feathers are slightly damaged uh, on this side. So just maybe we'll be able to hide those guys when we overlap these, these feathers. Before we can paint on this feather, we need to seal it so that your paint doesn't get into contact with the hairs of the feather itself. So what we do is you can use a fixative. So the fixative is normally used for sealing your drawings and stuff. So you can get this from any art shop. We're going to use that to seal our feather. So when working with a fixative, the first thing you want to do is work in a well-ventilated area. Give your can a good shake. So depending on the type of brand you've got, it may have a marble inside. And if it does, make sure you give this a good five-minute shake to make sure that the fixative itself is well mixed. Then before you start spraying, take off the lid and just spray out into the air, into the distance, just a few times to make sure that your nozzle is not blocked and it's gonna, not going to spray a strong stream. We want a nice light misting over the feather. So when you spray, you're going to spray like this from the one side off the feather gradually across to the other side in a light misting. You don't want to make this guy wet because otherwise all these the hairs and the feathers will crimp up and go all narrow again. We don't want that. We want to just give it a light misting, especially the first round. Then that light misting will leave it to dry and that will set these hairs in their place. Then the second round you can give it a little bit more of a thicker coat than the first one. But still, never fully dampen your, your feather. So you'll do it on the one side and you'll do it on the other side. And that'll keep these feathers nicely in place and it'll make them nice and firm. So that when you paint on them, they're not going to move. Right, so what you can do now is now you want to see how can you maximize the amount of painting space you've got. And you can do that by overlapping like ugly bits like this with other ugly bits. Like that. So that they crisscross each other and then end up giving you together forming one solid surface. So I'll always just play around and experiment and see what's going to give me the most painting area and the nicest looking composition. So what I'll often do is you can have stuff like this where it's it's a nice neat little breaking up on the edges and I like to have some of that breaking up visible. So what I'll do is I'll take that breaking up and I'll leave it here on the end on the outside edges so that when it's in the frame then you do have that little bit of natural breaking up. So let's maybe do that there. looks okay over there. So we can put him maybe here like this. And then we can overlap that ugly bit over here with this, like that. That gives us a nice big area, but nice little broken up bits on the outside. 
Right, so once you're happy with this painting surface and the little edges and stuff that you've got, now I'm going to take some blue tack. So if you haven't got blue tack, you can always just use your uh, your needed eraser. Just roll it out like this, so that it can extend past all of those, the ends of the feather over there. Press them down. So all you're doing is you're just keeping these guys in their position like that. So now you can use this and and to mount your feathers onto the frame without them moving on you and you're having to rearrange them again. Alright, so let's go and take a look and see what does the frame look like that you need to mount your feathers onto. The frame you want to buy to put your feathers in is a box frame. So you'll notice that this one has a, a deeper inside bit over there and the glass is here at the top where the artwork itself would go at the bottom. So you've got that space. So this one is at least that, the, my, my thumb thickness space between the artwork itself and the glass. And that allows you to have that little bit of height off your artwork. So they work perfectly for framing your feathers in. So what I'll do is remove the backing. put that one side. Now what I'm going to do is just remove the, the mat board itself and that little display paper. We don't need that. So I'll put the mat board also just one side. Keep that nice and safe for now. And here you can see this is the insert that is used to keep the, the artwork and the glass Separated. Alright, we can put this one side as well. Next up, I've got some foam core. So foam core is basically, you can get this by even the dollar store. It's got a foam and then it's got paper and paper on the top and the bottom. It's great, the kids use it for craft projects and stuff like that at school. We're going to use that to mount our feathers on. I'm going to take this because I know this is not exactly the size for the inside of the of the frame. I'm going to take a pencil. So I've laid this down so it's nicely against that edge over there and this edge over here. Now I'm going to take a pencil and just on the edge of that paper, just make a little mark there. There there and there. So what I've basically done is just transferred the size of this paper onto the foam core board. Now I can pop a cutting board underneath and use a knife. It cuts super easily. It's really easy peasy to cut. Any pressure on the knife that cuts right through. So I usually don't use much pressure, I'd rather cut a few times. And there we go. So now I've got a piece of foam core which is exactly the same size as the frame. So you can also see that the that mad board fits perfectly on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this mad board and I'm going to turn him upside down. So look there, now I've got given myself a two-tone background which adds extra interest to this artwork. 
like that. Let's get our feathers. And now we can put them down. So let's just zoom in on that so you can see how it looks. Can you see you've got that nice little overlapping over there? And I think that makes it look nice and organic. But of course you can always put it straight. Maybe try it this way. You decide. I think I quite like mine like that. Nice little bit of overlapping, some organic um, separation on the feathers and so on. It's going to look nice. All right, let's turn this guy this way. Now that we know where everything is going to sit, and we're happy with that. I'm going to remove this. We now need to keep these two stuck to each other. So to do that, I'm just going to use a just a standard glue stick. Because all we need, it doesn't need to be that permanent fix really, because all it needs to do is just stay in place while we're painting and, and mounting it. Once it's in the frame, it's not going anywhere, then it's not going to really matter. So just a, a glue stick is fine. Okay, if we put that down there, once it's in place, get the face. Great. From now on, you have to be super careful. You don't want to get any of this dirty. It's got to stay spotlessly clean. So what I have now at this stage is I've got my glue gun warming up. The glue gun is now hot. So I'm going to take this and move this one side. Remember, we have to be super careful with that. We don't want to get any glue bits over here. So I'm going to turn this upside down. Now I'm going to put some glue just on these little ribs, the center bit, not on the actual feather itself. Doesn't need to be a super thick bead or anything like that, just a, a little bead running down. And I'm careful not to get those little, that wiry excess that comes off the glue gun. I'm running it up and down, up and down until it's, it breaks off and it stays on that little center spine. Cool, now you're going to use your blue tack, bring this guy into play, carefully lay him down. So I'll start off with getting that first. Until I'm happy with the positioning, then I'll bring the back end down. And just press him down into place and quite firmly because I want that glue to dry so that the feathers themselves glue stuck down to the bottom and not lifting up. So we'll give that a good minute or so, pressing down like this, to make sure that all that hot glue is now dry again. So why do I use hot glue and not, let's say, super glue or something like that? With a hot glue, if you're careful, and you've only stuck it on those spines, you can remove it again. You'll destroy the paper removing it, but that doesn't matter. I mean, the just the fact that you're going to remove it means that you want to reframe it anyway. So that doesn't matter. All right, so now that he's nice and stuck, now you can carefully remove your, your blue tack, just like that. And just make sure it is now stuck down nicely. With the hot glue dry, everything is now fixed in place. So now you'll find that you'll have little hairs on some of these feathers that will stand up a little bit. And that's going to give you hassles when you paint. So what I like to do is just fix them in place as well. So I'm going to take just scraps of paper 
a lay that all around the feather. The idea being is that we just protecting the paper itself, the the mat board and so on. Everywhere where we're not going to be painting. Just like that. So all that you've got exposed is this little area that we're going to be painting on. And I'm going to just give this guy a light spray again. Don't, don't soak it because then all these little hairs will, could separate again. And just gently tap those loose hairs that are that are loose and then what it'll do is it will stick these hairs down to the the feather below it and you'll find that this fixative doesn't take too long to dry you'll usually find while you're pressing it like this they will you'll feel it drying on you It looks almost like surgery, eh? Alrighty. So with that done, now you've got a nice sealed surface and a nice solid surface to paint on. So you can take your, your scrap paper and use that for printing out a mask or something like that. So there we go. That guy is now good to go. So what I'll usually do at this point is I'll take my phone and I'll take a photo of it. And I'm going to take a photo of the mat board and everything and just try and get it nice and straight on the, on the photo. Then I'll download this photo to my computer. So I'm going to do that and open it up in my software editing program and I'll show you what we're going to do. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do is just crop this guy, get rid of the background, there we go. So that's now literally the size of the frame which in my case is 13 by 10 inches. So I'm going to take the document and I'm going to resize it. To 13 by 10 inches. So now what I've got in the computer and what I've got in real life is the same size. That way I'll be able to print out a true size version of this. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bird that I'm going to paint and I'm going to put it down here. So what I've done with the, the bird is I've just removed the background. That way I can put this guy down and play around with different options. So I'll take the, the bird and I'm going to just make him a little bit transparent so that I can see the feathers and I can see the bird at the same time and that's where I can judge what is this guy gonna look like at different places so I think for now that seems to be a pretty nice placing it's it's reasonably big on the feathers it's covering as much feathers as what we can yet we can still see some feathers so let's turf the background so I'm going to use my uh, eraser and I'm going to just erase whatever is not part of the what's not on the feathers just like that and now let's bring up that opacity of the bird again 
there we go. Now I've got a, a reasonably good feeling for what is my final painting going to look like. Let's just erase that little bit at the bottom there. Alrighty, so now I'm going to just crop just this little piece here. Now you're probably wondering why am I doing this step here. This step is A, I'm testing and I'm making sure that everything's alright because there's you have one chance to get this right. So this way I know I'm going to get the, the placing and everything correct. Plus it's going to give me a template to work from when I redrawing. So I'm not going to go and print this. So I've just cropped that little piece that's that's important. So I'm going to go and print that. And it's going to print it actual size. Because I've made the document the same correct size. There we go. See, my printout is now exactly the same size as that. So it's easy for me to, when I'm sketching out over here, because I don't have... Um, I can't do all sorts of grid work and stuff. I'm going to have to freehand my sketch. Now I've got a one-to-one -one image to work from, which makes it a lot easier to judge. Before we continue, I want to briefly tell you about my real-time paint and draw along art classes on my website. For a very small amount, you can get access to over 400 paint and draw along tutorials where you pack out your art supplies and you follow along as I show and explain to you in step-by-step -step detail how to complete each project. There are classes in acrylic, oil, watercolor, pencil, soft pastel and even lesser known mediums like pen and ink and scratch boarding. There's a link in the description below. Take a look. You'll be amazed at the awesome classes available there. Alrighty, let's continue from where we left off. Before I can start painting, I need to protect all the paper because at the end of the day, if I get any of that dirty, I destroy the entire artwork. I've wasted my time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fix this guy into place using my the blue tack that we used earlier. And that way, this whole artwork itself won't move. So I'm just blue tacking all the four corners just on the edges like that. There we go. See now this is fixed to the table. Now I'm going to use sheets of tracing paper and I'm going to lay that down over the paper, exposed paper areas. of the artwork, all the matte board and all those things that I can't afford to get any paint on. I'm going to cover them up. So why am I using tracing paper? You could use just standard paper. You could use that paper we used before to when we were sealing the feathers. But I like to use tracing paper because I can see through it. So that helps me when I'm sketching and painting and stuff to still be able to judge relationships of one thing to the other. So stick everything down, make sure nothing's going to lift up. No paint's going to sneak in underneath or anything like that. So we're rather being safe than sorry. Because if you get some paint on this mad board and paper, this backing paper here, the, the foam core, then you've destroyed the whole artwork because now you can't clean it. Be dirty forever. There we go. Now I can put that there and I can still see everything. 
but all that's exposed is the painting area. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and paint this owl. So the first thing we'll do is go and take a look and see what colors do we need to paint this. So the colors that I'm seeing there is definitely a yellow ochre. And then there's a darker brown which seems pretty similar to a raw umber. So let's put down a raw umber over there. And there's yellow in the eyes. So let's put down a cadmium yellow. And the beak is bluish. And it seems to be more sort of like a cerulean blue kind of color. And then there's black in the eye. And in the beak and stuff. So we need that. And then of course we always need white. So we can put the white down. Yeah, I think for now, let's start with those colors and see how they go. So the first thing you need to do is sketch out your subject onto the feathers. So what I'll do for that is just use a neutral kind of color. So the most neutral color that I'm seeing there would be the yellow ochre, because it does seem to be everywhere. So if we sketch it out with that, then what will happen is you'll just blend out into the background and look perfectly natural wherever we used it. So I think we'll start drawing with the yellow ochre. So I am not using oil paint today. You could work in acrylic as well if you wanted to. So let's put down just a little bit of yellow ochre. Maybe just down there. You'll find we need really just the tiniest amounts of, of paint. What I've put down there is way too much. When you're working with the feathers using really thin layers of paint. Right, so what I'm going to do is just put down a few drops just over there of my painting medium. So you can use any thin oil painting medium, as long as it's like watery like this, that's great. Because the brushes that we're going to be using today are just really fine liners. Guys like this. Let's take those tops off. Can you see there? Really just fine brushes, soft hairs and everything. Great. So I'll just pick the, the biggest one for now, just that guy over there. And now I'm going to just dip it into the painting medium and then work it into some of our paint, like that. And that's what I'm going to do the whole time. I'm just going to bring a little bit of the, the medium into the paint here on the side so that here, I can adjust this and I can make it thicker and thinner as needed to by adding more of this or more paint. Then, in the end of the day, when I'm done, I, I should even be able to, because that'll stay clean, I should be able to put that back in the tube. Alright, so let's go over to the feathers and start sketching this out. So I'm not going to show the palette. I'm just going to do that, just so that you can see the basic um, image of the of the bird and I'm using one color to sketch so there's no no reason for me to show the palette at this point. Right, so what I'm going to do is just start somewhere. I think I'm going to start with that top little bow of the head and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take let's just put here yeah, I think just for a few seconds, let's just get rid of that overlay. Just so that I can explain what I'm going to do before I actually start doing it. Why I've printed this out on my photo is it allows me to judge things. For example, can you see there's that little pointy bit on the, on the bird's head? So I can judge that pointy bit with on bits of the feathers. For example, I can see it's 
sort of just to that side of that there's a little rib over there just to that side of that and then it goes around it comes to here and he's going to go through that little point there's another little marking on side on the on the feather so he's going to come from here around there to there and then he's going to end over here somewhere so i'm going to gain just judge for other little markings and stuff on the on the feather so he's sort of across from that so there you go that little top of the head is going to run like that the the eyes i can't see now exactly here on markings on there but i'm going to use now those outlines i can see it goes from that little pointy bit if i go sort of 45 degrees in that eye is going to be in that vicinity the the, the scent of the beak is there in in that across from there down there my beak is going to end up around here and so on the this little where that ends is going to be here around where that little split in the feather hairs over there is and so on so i'm going to just keep judging what i'm needing to draw or sketch out with things that are on the image Alright, so let's do that. So there was that little mark over there. It comes out and ends up around here. So I'm just giving myself just a few little marks. And then I'll connect to those marks with each other. So he came around and ended up around this vicinity around there. So there's that. top of the head running something like that cool we'll just go down that side over there so that came down sort of at this angle across from that little split over there then he comes in a little bit maybe something yeah, probably something like that. And I'm, I'm keeping my drawing paper parallel and, and at the same, roughly the same height and everything as the, as the original, because it's now printed out at the right size. So that allows me to judge these guys easier because they're sitting at the same angles they're all the same sizes and so on and you can see all these marks are quite quite light okay from there he comes down and he meets up to yeah that little dot there's a little dot over there does seem to meet up around that vicinity there from here there things start fading out so now i'm going to use this outside edge that i've sketched out for myself and just get a feel for where do these these things sit on the inside of the face i've got a line running there and a line running there sort of just above that That little kink that we initially estimated. And let's see. Probably we've got an eye. The center of the eye is somewhere around here. The center of that eye, if 
and get him somewhere around there, we should be all right. And let's make a little mark here with the the center line of the of the beak. Okay, maybe we can just broaden that beak up a little bit. Here we've got that brown rounds off around here like that. That darker brown. And it comes down there and meets the beak over there. Let's do the other side. So that comes up there and it comes around here So these eyes, I'm going to just judge them rather a little bit too small initially. I can always make them bigger. It's quite close to that. Yeah, it's probably around there. Let's do the other one. Close to that little frown that the bird's got. Now also just checking that the one eye is about the same size as the other eye. Doesn't need to be perfect as long as it's more or less. Right, yeah, we're starting to see ourselves a little little L there now. So now that I've got a better feel for stuff, I'm going to just solidify those lines a little bit. So now they're just a little bit less. Subtle. Yeah, so we've got this in here. That. Around there. I think uh, this outside edge I'll keep reasonably subtle because you, you'll often become little it won't be a solid line, you'll have little broken bits as the the outside feathers on the owl break up. OK, 
Okay, let's see then here, from there it comes like this. Of curls around there. Some lighter hairs that are over here. If it comes down to there, okay, and it joins that. Alright, so here we've got all sorts of little darker feathers and stuff. So maybe I'll just give myself an idea of where some of these. Some of these feathers sit. There's that little darker patch over there. So I'm going to sort of just semi outline it. And there's that little darker guy. That goes around there like that. Yeah, I'm not going to panic too much if these markings and stuff aren't 100%. As long as I get them more or less. That's good enough. That's just to give us a, a, a feel for where's what. There's that guy. Okay, so all I'm doing is just outlining them. So I don't know, on the inside of those guys is where the, where the dark is. Then here we'll add just a few little lighter bits. It is starting to break up there, so I'm not having too much of that body visible there. Probably around here is another little dark guy. So let's outline him. And here, some of these hairs are now moving around a little bit. So going to have to be super gentle in that area there. And that's okay. There's where all the, all the action is. So what the heck? I'll stick with the yellow ochre. It does seem to be quite a yellow ochre type of color. And let's start adding some, some details in here. So I'm going to just use little flicks. And and the paint itself is kind of the consistency of, of, of an ink. Now when I'm painting these feathers, what I try and do is, is if possible, the colors in the in the bird that I'm painting will often be the same as the as the actual feather itself. So what I'll do then is try and use the the colors of the feather and let them just stick through, shine through. Let them um, help me. They become some of the colors. Then I don't have to paint them. And that also just helps you create that nice effect. All right, so I, I'm putting down those main little marks. Then I'm coming back in, in between, and just adding a few little separate guys in between them. Because what happens is you've got all these little hairs and they are overlapping each other. Maybe what I can do is let's zoom in a bit on that. Yeah, there we go. In other words, I'm using the, the yellow ochre to get the basic shape and the marking. 
got these little ribbed markings. So I've got these different colors of hair sort of clumping together or grouping together. But then in between them, you've got other hairs of a different color. But some of these guys are also still shining through because those hairs now overlap each other like this. So then you have different hairs shining through between the other ones. The, the, the bottom hairs are shining through the top hairs. So after I've got the basic markings, I'm adding extra little hairs in between. The main markings. So while we're at it, might as well just continue doing this in the areas where I'm seeing all these yellow workers. Alrighty, so when painting birds, you do need, need to be patient. Because you have lots of very fine little hairs. I mean, you can see for yourself on the feather below that we're painting on. Super, super fine little hairs on each feather. We now need to build up those layers. So now as you're painting, you may find that your your color, especially if you're painting in acrylic, you'll find that your color tends to just disappear on you a little bit, almost as though it's sinking into the into the feather. And that would depend on how well you've managed to to seal the feathers when you were using the the fixative. As you paint, don't press too hard on your on your feathers. You don't want to damage the hairs and you don't want to move the feather itself either. As you can see in this in this body area, I'm not trying to get too fine hair details. What I'm painting here is still lots of it is going to become the hairs underneath, and some of it is still soaking into the feather as well, in between the feathers. Because you seldom get that perfect seal. Oh, 
Yes, I'm just judging these guys. <laughs> Getting them more or less. The day, what I'm interested in is just getting myself some form of a pattern that will be on the on the owl's body because so we'll just make it pretty much fade out in this area over here. There's all our detail over there because that's where the person is going to look when they're looking at your painting. All well, this here would be mostly just faded out, we'll vignette it, same as what we did on the computer. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, let's get some of this in around here as well. Great, so by this stage, what I'm looking for is, is getting the the outline and just the main features and stuff plotted in and defined. I can see my L now. Now we are going to go over to other colors. So I'm going to do that. We'll show the palette and the bird. Alright, so let's start putting down a few other colors. Let's put down, say, some raw umber. I'll put a, a dollop of painting medium down there for him. And the other main color we see is some yellow, because there is some yellow inside the, the feather as well. It's not just pure yellow ochre sure there's some yellow in there as well. And let's put down a, a separate dollop for him of painting medium. And let's put down some white, just little bits of white, pea size of each color, more than enough. Let's put a dollop of that. Great. So now, the reason why I've got these different dollops here is now I can just tuck into each of those and it stays the same color. It, if I had a one big pile of painting medium, it would gradually dirty itself up. Because now you're mixing all sorts of colors into the painting medium, which we don't want. Alright, so let's get, I think for the most part, we can leave that, the original feather color as this dark brown. So let's try and just add a highlight onto that. So I'm taking the raw umber and I'm adding some white into that. So now I am trying to get finer little detail lines in here. So to do that, I'll often just pick up the paint in a chisel point fashion. And you do that by picking up the paint like this, and then you turn your brush 180 degrees and you pick up the paint again. So you're basically dragging your paint through the brush 180 degrees and then look there what happens is you get it's flat here how can i show it best there like that it's flat there and then as you turn it sideways you've got a chisel point chisel point flat chisel point flat so i'm working with that chisel point to get these fine little lines Get the same here on the other side. All 
So as you go, you, you will now find a, a little, just the correct How would I put it? So the correct ratio of how much to dilute your paint to get nice lines and stuff. If you make it too thin, it, it will tend to flow in between the little hairs. And if you get it too thick, it won't flow off the brush. So you'll, you'll find yourself getting that just that right little ratio. of paint to medium. Cool. Once I've done with the one color, I'm going to take a look. Where do I see it at other places? You'd be amazed that you find these different colors at different places. And random places as well, sometimes. And when you see it, just pop it in. Very light, soft, just delicate little strokes and flicks. All right, and as we do, we're gradually starting to get more and more details in here. Okay, I think our next color we should use is just some, some neat white. So I'll bring that down and use some of the white painting medium, bring that into that. And just mix it in. So I have now washed the brush to make sure he is nice and clean. Because the white, especially over the eyes, does give nice definition. So I'm just using loose little strokes like that.
Cool. So I'm concentrating now, just judging all these little the angles and stuff like that. And then, of course, the, the positions as well. Yeah, I think that's good for a for a first layer. Let's add some of this running down here. So everything I'm doing at this stage is all just planning. Just plotting out where everything goes and so on. So there's a good chance a lot of this here is going to be you're going to add an extra layer or two or three on top of it. So you will get to a place like here where I've got, I've got the one feather is overlapping the other at this point. So some of the these little hairs are not 100% stuck down. So you have to just wiggle and jiggle to get the paint in between the hairs so, so that it, it hits the, the bottom feather and, and covers that while still covering the top one so that you've got a nice continuous line so it looks like there's a continuous line all the way through alrighty so let's not just white there there's white at other places so let's bring that in Same here, just using just little taps and things. So I do see that there is um, quite a bit of white on the edges, but I think that's probably because from the cropping, we've cropped out the, the background itself. But I'm, I'm happy adding just a few little lighter guys here and there just to really reinforce that outer edge of the bird because that'll now help make it stand out from the from the background because you've now got that contrast As I'm working all the while, you can see I'm also adjusting the the consistency of my paint to make him thicker or thinner, depending on whether I want a nice thin, long, thin line or whether I'm trying to cover an area up a little bit more. Right, so I'm carefully working up to where I'm estimating that beak to be and then a little bit into the beak. It's easy for me to bring that beak now a little bit broader by going over these feathers. That's not a problem whatsoever.
These are the white feathers underneath here, actually quite fluffy. Surprisingly fluffy. And I'm just judging their positions. I can see it ends roughly there, just past the center of the eye. Then there's a few little marks here and there, like that. And then it continues over here again. Yeah, great. Continue around here. Just add a few on the edges. Just to get myself that contrast. So we know where the outside edge of the of the owl is. And then while we're busy with the white, let's start adding in a few around here. Just nice loose flicks. You find lots of these marks that we've got here are actually quite the softer feathers, those fluffier feathers. You don't have that you don't see that much detail. The one color sort of blends into the next. It's not a hard edge where the one color stops and the other one starts. So I can work a bit quicker in this vicinity here. Because I'm okay with these colors just blending into each other a little bit. Just to confirm, everything I'm doing here is super gentle. I'm not pressing hard on this brush whatsoever. It's just the tip of the brush. That's all. Okay, I think we're done with the white for now. All right, I'm going to take some yellow. And some little bit of yellow ochre. That. And some white. Let's pop them together and get ourselves a, a brighter yellowy color. some medium into that. Awesome. And now we're going to work that in between the whites and in between the browns and in between the yellow workers. And in doing that we're gradually now filling up more and more of the feathers.
and as before just keep adjusting your consistency of the paint Now making sure all these these hairs are gradually overlapping each other because we need to fill up everything with layers of hair. to get that the texture right Yeah, slowly filling up, eh? Slowly filling up. We're starting to get that effect of one here's over another. Okay, let's go over to some raw umber.
So I'm making sure all these strokes all overlapping previous ones. In other words, you can have light overlapping dark, dark overlapping light. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to just some neat yellow ochre again, just for some more oranges. Maybe we can even add just a tiny touch of crimson into that, just to deepen it, just ever so slightly. Just be careful. Just a little bit. So I'll even just make my own little separate pile over there to make sure that we don't end up with with red. Because crimson does tend to be quite a quite a strong colour. Tiny touch of white into that just to make it slightly brighter And as you can see, I'm overlapping all the previous guys as well. So now we've got three, four, five layers there now already at some places. Can't do too much on this side because it is now darker over here than than over there. Just a few little dabs and dashes here and there. Here we can be a little more generous, eh? Here there's more of this. As I put it on, I'm making sure it overlaps all the previous guys, or the edges of the previous guys. Awesome. Right, we're getting there now. Add some in over here too.
Yeah, I think that's probably far enough down. We couldn't go much further down than that. Alright, wash the brush. Let's take some yellow. And let's start getting these eyes in. So initially all I'm putting down is just yellow with just some medium in it. So yellow tends to be a transparent color. So what's happening is some of this background of the feather itself is shining through and that's not going to form the, the shadow part of the eye. That should be, that should be the trick there. That. So I'm not using this to try and get it as, as round as what I can. Doing my best. <laughs> Let's get the pupil also just a little bit too small. That's fine. All right, now we can take some white and we work it into that yellow. So white is now an opaque color. And by working that white into the transparent yellow, it makes the yellow more opaque. And I'm not going to be shy now. I'm going to lay down this paint. I'm going to layer it down quite thick to make sure that it stays nice and bright. Now, as you can see, I'm not taking it all the way around. I'm leaving those original little, the shadow bits on the eye. I'm leaving them. Okay, there's that. Right, now I'm just going to wipe off the excess paint on the brush. So I can just gently tap and fade the light one into the darker one. Just a quick little shading over there. If you don't want to line, it must look like a continuous little shading. Cool, let's get some black. So this is Payne's Grey. Well, I don't think I'm going to thin him down or anything. Just use it straight out the tube. Start here in the center and just gradually work your way out very slowly. And deliberately until you're happy with the, the size of the pupil. So the pupil is generally in the center of the iris. Try and get them about the same size. Okay, let's wash the brush there. Now I'm going to go over to a really fine little fine liner. My one hair brush. Because there's a really fine little edging. Around the eye like this. 
I suppose it's the eyelid. Or the eye wall, I'm not sure. So I'm just going to carefully work that in. So I'm also seeing that this is not quite round. It seems to go a little bit of a like a tent. <laughs> so I'm just going to round that off a little bit. <laughs> Otherwise, he's going to get a nickname. Tented or something like that. There we go. He's a bit rounder now, eh? Hey? Awesome. Let's work on that beak. So for the beak, he is bluish color. So I'm going to take some cerulean blue, just the tiniest dash of that. Steal some white and work some white into that cerulean blue until we get that, about that same tonal value. It's quite light. It's quite light. Yeah, seems to be roughly that kind of a color over there. And so again, I think I'll just work a tiny amount of medium into that, just so that it does come off the brush. I don't have to plaster it on, but not too much. And let's carefully work in that. That shape of the beak. I'll add a little bit more, a little bit more blue into mine, just so that it can stand out from the the white. It must definitely have a bit of a bluey tinge to him. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's better. Eh? So he is now mixing with the paint, the wet paint that is there. So if yours does now go too green, just. Uh, Wait until he dries and give him a, another layer. Alright, so our beak is sort of more or less there like that. Let's go to our black. Because the tip of the beak itself is black. I'm getting that black worked in there and then just very quickly it blends inwards like that. It's a very quick blend just to show the, that there's a bit of a rounding on this outside edge over here goes darker. So I'm just going to take some of that black that is not on the, on the brush and just blend that in over there. The same thing happens over here. So getting dark on this side and that side, it just rounds off the beak. Like that. Cool, I think I'm going to add just even more blue in there. Be a little bit more bolder, the blue. Bolder than on the on the reference. Because what I want to do is we need to take some neat white now. Wash the brush. And just add that little highlight on there. 
to make work a little bit of medium into this paint so that it does lie on top of the previous one it just dabs and taps like this two gentle dabs and taps running all the way down Okay, wash the brush, and now it's back to the black. Now add your your nostrils in, but roll the brush in the paint, so that you get a nice little, a nice round tip like that. Because you want to start this off just rather a little bit too small. You can always make them bigger, because I, I find you, you often start off too too big. You see that even those I, I've added them smaller than what they are on the on the photo. Yet they look good. Right, I'm going to go back to white because we've added now lots of little layers over these eyebrows. So I'm just going to finalize the, the white of those eyebrows just to make sure that they're nice and prominent. right here because it's that contrast between the dark color around the eye and then these lighter white eyebrows that make that stand out go cool. back to the yellow again so I have washed the brush to make sure I'm working with nice vibrant colors don't want to dirty this yellow. That paint is now sort of just settled in a little bit, so I can give him another coat. Just in the bright, the bright yellow areas. Just be careful not to touch the, the black now. There we go. Let's just keep that nice and bright. Right. Now I'm going to use neat white straight out the tube. Pick up the paint on the brush by rolling my brush inside that paint. And let's add that lovely little highlight in the eye. So use lots of paint because it now needs to lie on top of that black without without mixing too much. Alrighty, let's stand back and see what does our what does our painting look like at this point. Yeah, there we go. There's our oh right so now before I take off any of this masking I'm checking my hands, making sure there's no paint on my hands anywhere. 
So maybe go away, wash your hands, dry them, make sure they're perfectly clean. Pack your paint away and the dirty brushes. Get all of that well out the way. You've come too far now to have any accidents. Make sure there's no spots of paint on the table or anything like that. If you're happy, then you can remove the carefully remove the mask. So you'll notice when I did put the mask down, I didn't sell it, uh, put any tape, didn't put any masking tape on the actual paper itself. It was all on the table around it. So there's no way that I could accidentally lift up or rip up any of the paper. Okay, let's we can take him off the table now. He doesn't need to stick there anymore. That's the way he looks. So let's put him inside the frame. So before we do, we need to just sign our masterpiece. What I'm going to do for that is just use a just a standard pen. Awesome. Let's bring our frame closer. Now carefully, see I'm not touching anything on this artwork whatsoever. Everything's here on the side. Let's turn him sideways. Only touching on the side. I don't want any chance of getting any dirt now onto this artwork because yeah, he's still wet. Like that, and carefully get him into there, into the frame. Then you can take this and put him back in there. Yeah, seems like I've just, just enough place. It's nice and nice and flush with the back. Alrighty. Yeah, so there we go. There's your, uh, there's your L, all done and dusted. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Good luck painting your L and painting your feathers. Obviously, you're going to paint other things than nails. So if you did enjoy today's lesson, uh, please go ahead, take a look. The lesson, uh, the the link to my website is below. There you'll be able to go and download the the handouts for this class and access hundreds of other classes of mine. Good luck. I'll see you next time.